All right, that's better. Good morning. This is the Tuesday of the second Sunday in after Advent. In Advent, oops. Uh, live Bible study. We're gonna we're gonna start John chapter twenty, beginning um, with the nineteenth verse in a hop, skip, and a jump. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, Higher Things is celebrating their. 20th anniversary, the 20th birthday. I invite you to consider a tax deductible donation to that. Go to higherthings.org and hit that giving link uh, and be um, be a gift to Higher Things today. 20 years, that's 20 years of spreading the gospel, 20 years of giving young people the gospel, 20 years of, of um, daring young people to be Lutheran. 20 years of that. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Let's uh, let's hit the text. I got some folks here this morning. Uh, you can check it out at myht.higherthings.org. That's the the um, one of the locations for the um, for the stream and on Facebook. All right. Let's let's hit 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, the doors, having been closed, perfect, um, where the disciples were because of fear of the Jews. Now, so this is very, very important. Mary Magdalene has come back and said that she has seen the Lord. Ah, Jennifer's there. Good to see you. Mary Magdalene has come back and said she has seen the Lord. And so they've heard that the Lord is alive, but they don't believe. And thus they're locked in these rooms for fear of the Jews. They're afraid that something's going to happen. And the something that's going to happen is going to be bad for them. What's going to ha- what happened to Jesus is going to happen to them. They're, they're certain of it and they're locked in their rooms. So despite Mary Magdalene, apostling them that Christ is risen from the dead, they stand in their rooms locked in for fear. Fear that what happened to them is what happened to Jesus is going to happen to them. I do not have snow, Felicity. I wish I had snow. But the doors are locked and there they are. Easter evening. Don't miss this. So after a day of Mary saying that she'd seen the Lord, after a day of her repeating that the Lord was was alive and well, that he'd raised from the dead, they're still in their room locked up. And he and Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Notice he doesn't say, You people stink. It's so hard to find good disciples these days. He doesn't say, he doesn't say, I wish I could, I wish you to believe what I said. I told you I was going to raise from the dead and here I am. He doesn't say that. No, he shows up on the first, on this first Easter evening with peace. Peace, peace. He shows up and he gives them the forgiveness of sins. Peace be with you. So very, very important. This is not, this is not God's mad at you. And he wants you to get your stuff together. And if you don't get your stuff together, God's going to, going to execute his judgment on you. And he's going to, and he's going to do bad things to you. It's not that. And this is not, you know, um, God's going to finally give you what you deserve. He shows up in their midst and he says, peace be with you. The one who told Mary Magdalene that he was going to go to my God and your God, to my father and your father, tells them, Frady Cat Apostles, peace be with you. Peace be with you. 
He stands in their midst and he gives them his peace. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, his side. His hands and his side. Now, this is important. Now, why show them his hands and his side? To, 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 to make it clear that not, that not only was, was he alive, but that he was crucified for them. And that the one that was alive was the one who was crucified for them. See, that's the, that's the good news of Easter. It's not that just somebody rose from the dead. Plenty of re, uh, religions have that. The, the, the gift of, of, of Easter is that the one who died for us on Good Friday, he rose from the dead. Think about that. So it's not just that somebody rose from the dead. It's that the one crucified for our sins has been raised for our justification before God. What a gift. What a gift. And he has peace. And it, the peace is located in his hands and his side. Uh, the dean, I know, had, um, with without doubt, shared with you the gift that is um, his hands and his side. Out of the side of Adam was pulled a woman. Out of the side of Christ flows the blood and water which make the church, which give birth to the church, which create the church. The blood of Jesus, the water flowing from his birth. The proof that he was surely dead, but also how we are alive by the water and the blood. And the three testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood that he is the son of God and that he has died for us and rose for us and lives for us. And so in just a wee bit where Tommy asked for his hands and his side, it's because the apostles needed to see the, the hands and the side. They should have believed the apostling of Mary, but they didn't. Whether it was for joy or whether it was because that's not how the universe works. This is the universe where dead people stay dead. And here's Jesus alive. For you. Alive. To save you. They were glad. The disciples were seeing the Lord. You betcha they were glad. He has conquered sin. He has conquered death. He has saved them and us. We are saved in him. We are thus saved by him. Yes, Will Robinson. The peace is located in his hands and his side. Peace with God. So when you're singing that Christmas carol, God and sinners reconciled, and peace on earth and goodwill to men. Understand where that peace is won. It's won on the cross. It's won in the holy life and the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus. That's what's happening. That's what happened. That's what saves. And Jesus said to them, Palin, again, Arene Humen, peace be with you. Just as the Father apostled me, so I, Pimpo, I send you. Jesus is apostled by the Father to bring peace in his hands and side. You, apostles, are apostled, sent by me to bring peace 
in the words of my hands and my side. That's what's going on here. And he breathed on them. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. <clears throat> he spirited them. He, 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 as, as God breathed the breath of life into dead dirt Adam, so now Jesus breathes the breath of forgiveness into his apostles. That's what your pastor is for. Your pastor was sent to breathe life into your dead embers. To, your, to give your dry bones life. He wasn't sent to build a big church. He wasn't sent to grow a, a company. He wasn't sent to be CEO or, or, or head administrator. He was sent to breathe the breath of the forgiveness of sins into you. To save you, even you. The hands are human hands, but the hands are the hands of Christ. The mouth is a human mouth, but the mouth delivers the words of Christ. That's why we wear black. One of the kids at chapel today, she says, uh, is that the only shirt you have? Do you, why do you wear that every day? And I said, well, it's, it's um, you know, uh, sometimes grownups have uh, uniforms and this is my, this is my uniform. Do you wear that at home? No, I don't, I don't wear it at home. That's not the way I roll. I don't wear it at home. Um, I wear it here. And she says, oh, see, the black says that I'm a sinner just like you. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. I have bad thoughts. I have bad deeds. I'm a scoundrel. But the words that come out of my mouth, that's what you need to pay, pay attention to. What comes out of my voice box is the words you need to hear. Everything else is sinful. And I'm not the important thing because there can be somebody else afterwards who takes my place, who wears my, who wears my collars and wears my robes. I'm disposable. Here today, tomorrow, gone. That's the truth. That's the truth. There is a... Um, Um, that's the, that's the sort of, the temporalness of it. There's a sort of, it puts everything in perspective. The world sees the pastor up front, and that's the big deal. Um, but in actuality, he's not a big deal. He's a servant of the word. He's a servant of the word. And so, as the Father sent me, so I send you. And he breathes on them to give them the spirit of life. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. And if you withhold or retain, they are retained. This is, it couldn't be more clear. When I was a young pup in confirmation, a college student, um, pastor read this section and, and I just sort of, I must have grimaced. Um, I know me pretty well and my, my, my poker face isn't that good. All right. And, and so I, um, I sort of grimaced and he said, you don't believe that, do you? And he opened up the scriptures to John when he was talking about how pastor, uh, how um, uh, pastors forgive sins. 
Um, I was just like, when he, when he opened up the scripture, showed me this verse, and it changed my world. Because your pastor is a fountain of forgiveness. He delivers it from God. You can think of this in two ways. You can think that that he holds the very key that opens heaven for you. You can think that. Connecting it to his words. He delivers Jesus' forgiveness. That's the only forgiveness there is. Or if you sort of want to have a lower view of this, you can take this as he announces a reality that is already true of you. That Christ died and rose again for you. And he says to you, Christ died and rose again for you. Your sins are forgiven in that in that death of Christ. I'm okay with that. I'll take that. But I, what I think is really happening here is that if I forgive you of your sins, it's not I that's forgiving you, but Christ that's forgiving you. If I retain your sins as a pastor, it's not I that's doing it. It's Christ that's doing it. And that is an awful task. They are the keys because they open heaven and close heaven. But if you want to look at the excommunicating key when, when God retains your sins as um, as stating to your reality that's already true, you're already on the way to hell and all your pastor has done is told you that you're already on your way to hell, I'm okay with that. I think it's a first step. It gets your foot in the door. All right? Um, God works through men. He sends his men and their, and their message is forgiveness and retaining of sins. Law and gospel. That's what they do. That's what I do. The simplest job in the world. I tell people their sins are forgiven. That's the primary thing. That's what came first. Those that think that the important thing is retaining sins, have, have it's not what's first. It doesn't say if you retain anybody, their sins, they're forgiven. They're, they're retained. But if you forgive anybody, their sins, they're forgiven. He says, if you forgive someone their sins, they're forgiven. If you retain them, they're retained. The key, that the, 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 the purpose of your pastor is to forgive sins. He retains sins in order to forgive sins. That's why he retains sins. I don't wake up in the morning like, oh, I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to retain some sins today. No. People make me retain sins by, by refusing to repent. They refuse to repent. I have no other choice other than to retain sins. But I do so not so that they, I can show them how mad God is. Sins are retained so that, so that the person would go, this isn't worth going to hell over and repent. That's what's going on. This isn't worth going to hell over and repent. That's why, that's right, the sins are retained. So, 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 the important thing is, is the forgiveness of sins. That's what God wants to do. God's primary move, God is moving hard in the paint to forgive your sins. That's his primary move. Um, I've been told when I teach large groups, that I have a tendency to hang out on the right side, to teach to the right side of the room, and I have to focus and concentrate on teaching to the left. God is the same way. God wants to hang out in the gospel. We make him go back to the law, okay? Not because the law is bad, but because he, that's not his primary thing. His primary thing is to forgive sins. He does the, um, the, the alien thing of retaining sins in order to do his primary thing. Okay, that's why you punished your children, not because you wanted to punish your children, but you wanted you don't want your kids growing up to be a bunch of, you know, brats. Higher things merchandise. Higherthings.org slash store. Oof. Contrast problem there. The contrast went nuts. Did you see it? It's like, ooh. All right. Moving right along. So whether you see this as um as whether you see this as my pastor forgives sins or my pastor announces the grace of God to me, I, I don't really care. I think there's a greater gift in 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 the my pastor forgives sins, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm never going to look a, a gift horse in the mouth. I'm going to just sort of take it as you go. I don't remember seeing the cup. Check it out, buddy. Check it out. All right. Um, now Tom. Okay. So wait, wait, just pick, take note of what different things the Lord sends. 
In Matthew's gospel, he's pre he sends men to, to baptize and teach, make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching. In Mark's gospel, they're sent to, to, to preach the gospel to all creation. In Luke's gospel, they're sent to um, preach repentance toward the forgiveness of sins. And in John's gospel, with the peace of God, the blood and water flowing from his pierced side, they are sent to forgive and retain sins. All of those, all of those are the same thing, the same job. Baptize, teach, preach the gospel in all creation. Preach repentance under the forgiveness of sins. Forgive and retain sins. All of those are the same job. Different ways of looking at the same job. We deliver the forgiveness of sins. That's our job. We deliver the forgiveness of sins. That's what we do. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. That's the way you should look at it. All right. Now, Thomas. Thomas was one of the twelve, having been called Didymus. Thomas had a nickname, and Thomas's nickname is Didymus, twin. Which, well, what does it probably mean? Just hold it for a second and tell me what you think it probably means that Thomas is called the twin. We're going to set that. I'm going to let you sort of answer that, and I'll read your answers as we go. But um, Thomas is called the twin. He was not with them when Jesus came. And so remember, Jesus sent Mary Magdalene to tell them, We've seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord, and to, what, and to say what things he had said to her. I'm going back to my God and your God, my Father and your Father. But Thomas wasn't there for that. He wasn't there for that. And so um, the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, and this is very, very important what he says, Unless I see, in his hands the place of the nails and I throw my finger into the place of the nails and I throw my hand into his pleuron, his side u me piste uso I will not believe this is not doubting Thomas this is not doubting Thomas this is unbelieving Thomas and Will Robinson is right on this he has a Thomas is probably um, called twin because he looked just like one of his brothers, or was was it was um, was a twin of his dad. Okay, he looked like somebody in his family, like Shorty. He's usually not short. That's ironic. Twin though is usually he, he like he looks like one of his like one of his one of his relatives. He looks like one of his brothers, or he looks like his dad. And the fact that we are told over and over again by John when Thomas does his bone stupid things that he's a twin should tell us, as Robinson says, Will Robinson, um, that um, Thomas has a twin. We're Thomas' twin. This is the way we act. Unless God do, does X, Y, and Z for me, I will not believe. Unless I see in his hands the place of the nails and I see in his hands... Um, I put I, I I throw my finger into it. I throw my finger into the, the place of the nails. Very emphatic. It's like a junior. You got it. He, yeah, Mark is right. He is one of the pair of twins, or, and his brother is better known than he is, or the twin or the other brother. This is my brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl from Newhart in the 1980s. But again, there's 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 a connection here with some member of his family, the connection is us. We look like this guy. And listen to the emphatic nature of the unbelief. Unless I place into, I see the mark of the nails 
and I throw my finger into the mark of the nails and I throw my hand into his side, I will not believe. U me piste uso. I will not believe. Non credem in Latin. I will not creed. Notice it's not, I've got doubts. I'm like, no, he's not doubting Thomas. He's unbelieving Thomas. And he should believe the apostles. He should believe the He should believe. Did I say that he should believe? They should have believed Mary Magdalene, but they didn't. They had to see the Lord. He has to see the Lord. And what's sad about this is if it wasn't for Thomas going to the Wally world or the McDonald's to pick up a, a slew of filet of fish sandwiches for them, he would have been there and it would have been Andrew or or John or someone else who had to be who who was very emphatic, but the Lord put Thomas there because huh, Thomas is our twin. Unless I see the place of the nails and throw my hand in finger into the place of the nails and thrust my finger into his side, I will not creed. I will not say the creed. I will not. Nope. Eight days later, Jesus again stood in the midst of the disciples, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Jesus came in the midst of them and said, Thomas, you stinky, stinky, stinky brat, you should believe. No, no, that's not what he said. That's not what he said. That's, that's, not, that's not what he said. You got it, Jacoby. Thomas Twin is me because I, I doubt, because I don't believe, because I don't believe. If I, if I believed, I wouldn't do half the stunts that I do. Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, take your finger and put it here. Put your finger here. And take your hand and put it in, um, in my side, in my pleura. Me genu apistis apistos. Don't be unbelieving. Don't be unfaithing. But pistos. But but faithing. Don't be unbelieving, but believing. So it's not doubt. It's not doubt. It's not doubt. It's unbelief. It's unfaith. You and I should believe. Should believe. The, 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 the message of the ones sent to forgive and retain our sins. We should repent of our sins. We should believe the gospel. We should leave our sins behind. We should believe that Jesus died and rose again for us. We should live from his words and his promises. But instead we live in unfaith, as if Jesus was still dead, as if, we have, if, as if there's no reason to repent. Poo? I don't know what you're talking about. Um... As if Christ has not been raised from the dead. Just think. If Christ lives, then everything has meaning. If Christ lives, then Christmas has meaning. And there's a reason to change. And there's a reason to love other people. More than just be good for goodness sake. Because that word of law will only go so far. There's a reason to hug people. There's a reason to care for people. There's a reason to to do good to others. There's a reason to lift them up. There's a reason to let them go first. There's a reason when you're sinned against to forgive. If Christ is raised from the dead, then the world has changed. Then, then things have changed. There isn't, death isn't the end. It's just the beginning. But if Christ isn't raised from the dead, then this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world where you take what you want when you want it. You scratch every itch you can until they tell you that you've got six months left to live. And you, and, and, and you do what you can for yourself. If Christ be not raised from the dead, then the Christian faith is a bunch of stupidity. But we see from Thomas the, the simple fact that God has died and God has rose. 
and now God lives. And since God lives, everything has changed. Oh, pistos. That's the Greek word for faith, Felicity. He lives, we live too, and now that he lives, we'll never die. And the only thing to say to that, that both law and the gospel, the gospel, the law of you made some requirements, and now here they are, do them. Put your finger here, put your put your put your hand here just you that's what your requirements were so you do them and the other you know sort of oh my gosh i'm so sorry did i sound that way yes you did now put your finger here and put your hand here the only thing to say to jesus's gospeling and law in thomas is her curious moo Hotelosmu, my Lord and my God. You are the God who saves. You are the God who saves even me. You are my Lord and my God. You are my Savior. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you saw me? Makeriu ha me idontes. Blessed are those not seeing, but believing. Blessed are those not seeing, but believing. And though we who have never seen Jesus believe that he died and rose again for us, we who have never, ever, ever, um, yeah, I love Scrooge, Mark, but, and I, I think I watched it yesterday, but his, his speech is still missing it. The reason why we do all the stuff that we do, and if I, if I channeled my inner um, Bill Murray, um, yeah, we do what we do because Christ died and rose again for us. We live the way we live because Christ died and rose again for us. There's meaning in Christmas not because we make it have meaning. There's meaning in Christmas because Christ died and rose again for us. The baby died and rose again for us. And and you believe now, Thomas, because you've seen. Blessed are those who will never see me and yet believe. They will not see me in this life, but yet they believe that Christ died and rose again for them. They believe that he lives and they live in him. And blessed are you for those, blessed are you, those who believe that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go into overtime just for a second to the chagrin of, of Sandra. Palame. This is a first ending in a book of John. This could have ended here, but there was more. But I want you to hear this ending because it connects with the stuff before it. The piece is located in his hands and side, but you don't see his hands and side. You, you hear his words. You receive the water and the blood. All right. And although there is part of you that wish to see him, and if it would be easier for you to see him, you are blessed in not seeing him. Because Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written down in this um, biblion, in this book, in this scroll. But these are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ and believing have life in his name. Okay? So, so there are a lot of things that Jesus did that we don't know about. A lot of things he did that we don't understand. A lot of things that he did with his disciples that he doesn't do with us. But that is not the big deal. The big deal is that these things are written that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing have life in his name. Ha Christos ha uyas tu theu. That he is the Christ, the Son of God. And so the reason, um, the reason why, um, the reason why the reason why you have what you have in the scriptures, the reason why Jesus says what he says, what, what John writes what he writes, is not so that you would know everything that Jesus ever did and said. That would be swell. We'll know that on the last day. But these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And by believing in him, to believe in Jesus is to have life in his name. This is eternal life. 
that you believe that God sent his son. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and gave up his son for us. And so, so the end of this directs us back to the words. And that's what's most important. All right. Jesus is Good Friday and Easter do you no good unless Jesus is Good Friday and Easter has been Good Friday and Easter for you. And you hear about his Good Friday and Easter in the word. So the idea that 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 that, that, that we know every little every little thing that Jesus did was magic. We we don't need to know that. What we know is good enough. What we know is to to believe that Jesus died and rose again for us. That he's the Christ, the Son of God, and believing have life in his name. By believing have life in his name. And so the section begins and ends with the Lord's words. Him showing him the peace of God, which is the, them, the, his hands and his side, and that his, his, his proclamation to them that he's alive. But more than that, he's sending them to preach, preach forgiveness and retaining of sins, to forgive the sins of repentant sinners and to retain the sins of the unrepentant as long as we do not repent, so that we would know that when God deals with us by his divine command, that is, when he... When he um, when he forgives the sins of repentant sinners and he retains the, re the, the, the sins of the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. This is just as valid and certain even heaven as if Christ our dear Lord has dealt with us himself. Everything depends upon the word. And Thomas then pushes that even further by directing us away from seeing God to hearing God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so everything ends with everything ends with the words and promises of God. That's the important thing. That's the important thing. The promises of God. That's the important thing. That's what's going on. All right. On this, our birthday week, I invite you to go to higherthings.org and hit that give button today. Um, and you can help us continue to, to dare the next generation to be, to run further and faster than we did. I want you to go to that higherthings.org and hit that giving button and give today. A tax deductible gift goes a long way in helping us celebrate our, our 20th anniversary. Not just that, but helping us continue to, to teach kids to pass on to the faith that salvation is by grace alone, that is by faith alone, received by scripture alone, received from scripture alone. It's the words, the words, the words, the words that matter. All right. Tomorrow, 21, same HT time, same HT channel. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.